awake yet? No. 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 Y'all enjoyed coming through the rain to get here and see my lovely mug? Yeah. Well, we do have some assistance. There we go. <laughs> Fine. I will take this off just for you, Anita. Okay. Don't say I never did anything for you. I'm so glad y'all are here. I'm so glad that we are able to worship again on this Easter Sunday, the last Sunday of Easter. I don't know if you noticed or not, but next week, Easter ends and Pentecost is here. Pentecost is one of my favorite holidays because there's a lot of um, talk about the Holy Spirit. And I think that if you've been here a time or two, you know I love me some Holy Spirit. And I love to talk about the Holy Spirit. And if you're in the Acts Bible study, you knew just how much I love the, the Holy Spirit, too. So... Anyways, next week's going to be exciting. Um, it's going to be a little bit more interactive than normal. It's going to still be in here and everything, but I have some interesting plans for us to where it's not just y'all sitting there the whole time, but we're actually going to kind of do something a little bit different. So I hope y'all do make it for that. It's going to be exciting. I I'm excited to try new things with you all. And if y'all don't like it, y'all can yell at me afterwards. It's okay. So... Anyways, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that you are here to worship, and I'm so thankful with, that you come here to Glencoe and grace us with your gifts, your talents, and your presence and witness. These are beautiful things that we can all bring together to help each other grow, as well as to help this church be better and to help this community grow closer to God. And that is a blessing in and of itself. So thank you. But let's go ahead. scripture lesson today comes from Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 15 through 23. Hear now the word of God. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened you may not you may know what the, is the hope to which he has called you what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints 
and what is immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power God put his power this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at, the, at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name is named not only in this age but also in the age to come and he has put past and he has put all things under his feet and made him the head over all things for the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all this is the word of god for us the people of god thanks be to god let's go to god in prayer at this time oh loving god we come here to worship you but we always like to see each other we like to be with each other we like to speak with each other we like to grow together in our relationships and that means that when some of us are not here we miss them we miss the opportunity to see them we miss the opportunity to experience their presence we miss the opportunity to feel their love lord there are many names that were mentioned today be with each and every one of them give them your comfort give them your peace give them your love help them feel your presence so that way they know that they're not alone help them know that you are there with them to guide them and keep them safe and to help them feel like there's hope because with you O oh lord anything is possible with you O oh lord hope is only bountiful not scarce lord as we move forward in our worship this day keep these persons and all of those on our prayer list in our hearts in our minds and help us to to be there for them in any way that we can to show them that we love them and care about them lord we ask all these things through your son christ jesus this day amen, amen. friends Will you pray with me now as we bless the offering before us? Let us pray. Gracious God, before you are our gifts of offerings and tithes. May they be for your will. May they help transform this world into what you would have it to be, to become the kingdom that you want it to be, which is your kingdom, O oh Lord. May all of our sinfulness just melt away, and may your divine grace just intertwine with everything around us so that way one day you may reign forevermore here with us as we are your faithful children thank you for these blessings and thank you for your love amen our gospel lesson this day comes from the gospel of saint luke and it's chapter 24 verses 44 through 53 let us hear now the word of God. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I still, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and is to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I had an opportunity this past week to go to a retreat that was offered by the conference, and we went to Mount Shepherd, uh, the Mount Shepherd Retreat Center in Ashboro. Does anybody know where that is? Has anybody ever been there? I see one hand. 
you need to go sometime. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and uh, it, it's just a great opportunity. They have, they, they were telling me when I was there that they actually have all of their summer booked up with kids. And it's going to be an amazing thing. I, I love summer camps. I always enjoyed it. When I was little, they were very transformative. And I'm so glad that they actually have a full agenda for this summer with kids to, at summer camp to be thinking about God and growing spiritually, as well as growing in their relationships with each other. The retreat itself, though, that I went to was on fresh expressions. Has anybody ever heard that term before? No? Well, this is what it is. It essentially means thinking of new and innovative ways of doing worship outside of the church to reach those who are not in our churches and the ones who don't want to ever go to church because there are many that have been harmed by churches. And so this is a way, this, this fresh expressions movement, which started internationally in the UK, has, has become picked up steam here in the US to help those who don't want to actually go to a church. It's a new way of doing church, a new way of doing ministry and worshiping God. But anyways, that's not why we're here today. I'm not going to go into the details of that. If you want more about that, you can talk to me some other time about it. But I mention this because of what happened at the end of the day, of the day at the retreat that I went to. Uh, I, I signed up for a demonstration, so to speak, of a fresh expression. Just here's an opportunity, an example of what a fresh expression could look like. And somebody just threw out this idea. And they had different things that, they, that you could sign up for. And I chose to sign up for <laughs> hiking. Well, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, I haven't hiked in a few years. I think to my best knowledge, 2012. <laughs> that's that's just to my knowledge. I, I, it may have been longer. It's very possible, but that's the last time I remember. And um, in case you haven't noticed, I'm a little out of shape. So, needless to say, it was a little difficult going hiking. But I thought, oh, it ain't going to be too bad. You know, I think of hiking, I think of back when I was younger, these big walking trails, right? Like they're as big enough to, to usually fit almost like three or four people side by side or maybe even a car. And you, you just mosey on around, you're going up, but it's not super steep. Only to find out we went to the top of the mountain and it was straight up. And when I mean straight up, I'm not kidding. A path this big going like this. Needless to say, that wasn't too easy. And needless to say, I was regretting my choice. But in that time, I did spend time in nature. I enjoyed the time with others that were around me who also didn't know what they were getting themselves into. There were people walking in flip-flops because they didn't realize it was, a, it was a fun experience for us all. We were looking for walking sticks along the way, and, and my old Boy Scout self said, Dang, I mean, where's my walking stick when I need one? Because I had one at one time, and I thought, to, and I haven't, I haven't hiked in so long, I didn't think to, to ever keep it. Man, I was regretting that yesterday. But here's the thing when I was going, it was a lot of fun, it was hard. And I got a little exercise out of it, which is good for me, too. And as we went up, to, up the mountain while I was struggling, we got to the top. And the top was where that's, that was the climax of the whole thing. Because it wasn't, it wasn't about you know, anything else not being fun. But at the top, there was a fire tower. Has anybody ever been up onto a fire tower when it's um, in the mountains or on a real high hill? Anybody? Let me tell you what you missed. That is one of the views on top of that fire tower. But this is not my favorite picture. The next one, that's my favorite. It was beautiful. It was majestic. 
It was something that I just was standing there and all. Now, one thing you need to know about me is I'm afraid of heights. And I was walking up this thing, and about the time we got to the tree line, and it was still no end in sight, I was starting to get a little nervous. <laughs> Needless to say, when I got to the top, when it was moving a little bit, because, you know, you're so high, what, it's going to rock a little, I was a little scared. But a couple scriptures came to mind when I was up there. When I calmed myself a little bit by the majesty of what I was seeing, I thought of Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it, for he has founded it on the seas and established it on the, on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in this holy place? Who have, who, those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. That's the first five verses of Psalm 24. It made me think about uh, those who used to worship in temple back in the Old Testament, the Israelites. They would go up to the temple, which was always on a hill. So I thought to myself, not that this was a temple, but I had to go up this steep hill, this mountain. I had to climb it to get to the majesty that resided on top of it, the beauty that was there. And that's what they did back in the day of the Israelites. They had to ascend to the temple. And if you read any of the Psalms between 120 and 134, those are Psalms of ascent where they're talking about the pilgrimage or the journey to the temple. That's important because you got to remember these people, a lot of folks were traveling from afar. They were giving up their livelihoods for a chance to go to temple. And for many, it was only a once in a lifetime opportunity. And even to this day, not everybody gets the chance to go. This was a beautiful opportunity for them to go, but it was hard. It was long and it was hard. People would travel for days and weeks at a time. That was just to get there. Then you had to go back. Like for me, yesterday, there was no quick way back down the mountain. We had to go back down the mountain. And I don't know if you've been down a mountain lately, but it's not too easy when it's super steep. And there's little rocks and there's leaves everywhere and you don't know and you step. Not easy. And I imagine that these Israelites who, who were going up the, the hill to temple, they were dealing with these long and hard journeys, not to mention it was dangerous. For them, they had to worry about thieves and robbers. There's the reason, one of the reasons why the parable of the Good Samaritan is so powerful was because it's not unheard of for someone to get robbed and left on the side of the road dead. And that's the same thing for going to, to the temple. It would happen. So this was a long and treacherous journey for many. Which then re also reminds me, friends, of Psalm 121. Maybe you've heard it. I lift my eyes into the hills. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Can you hear the pilgrims singing that song as they're going up the hill to the temple? Singing praise that God is protecting them, is being with them, and is made all of the majesty that they see. I saw Psalm 121 as I looked out because I thought about it to myself when you look up, you just don't realize how beautiful it is. But when you get there, you realize just how gorgeous it can be. And I feel that way, that, that was kind of the way of the temple. Because the temple was this beautiful opportunity, this chance to worship the Lord their God, to love God in God's temple. And as they went up, they kept their eyes up. Because that's where God is. And when you uh, hear in Ephesians, 
when he read it, uh, what we read in Ephesians there where uh, Paul says, and he has put all things under his feet and made him head over all things of the church. That's a reference to Psalm 121. And keep reading Psalm 121 and you see that reference. It's important that we see how scripture is so important to us. But let's get to, gospel, to the gospel lesson. We're reading about the ascension of Jesus. On Thursday, May 13th was the ascension day. Has, has anybody ever heard of that day before? Has that ever been mentioned to you? That's the day that Jesus ascended, according to our church calendar. Today is Ascension Sunday. We talk about the ascension and what that means. Well, I'm going to express to you what it means to me today. It can mean so many different things to so many different people. Next year, this sermon will be totally different because everything changes from day to day as we experience things. God speaks to us and gives us motivations and um, experiential knowledge. In today's scripture, we, we read of Jesus ascending from, according to St. Luke, from the earth, earthly realm, to the to heaven. And we've been talking about throughout Easter that Jesus had risen from the dead. And all that and, and all this has led up to this moment. He had died, he had risen, and he had done things with the disciples. He had talked to them to give them hope. But now he said, Listen, there's more to come. And that's that Holy Spirit, the power that he talks about here. You just have to wait in Jerusalem a little bit longer, he said. And as Jesus ascended, he, he went up to live and rule at the right hand of God the Father. He, Paul tells us that. Plus, if you ever notice, whenever we do our creeds or something, these specific words, have you ever heard that? You realize that this is where it comes from, Scripture. What I think is so important about today's scripture as it relates to the mountains is I think to myself what a sight it must have been to watch Jesus ascend, keeping their eyes up on God as God ascended into heaven. How often is it that we look down, we look back, we look away from God? And we miss the beauty. We miss the opportunity. We miss what is important. It is important that we don't do that. We must keep our eyes upward towards God. We must keep our eyes up the hill towards the temple. We must keep our eyes up to the top of the mountain. It's no coincidence that when um, important things take place with God... They're on top of mountains or hills. Where were the commandments given? On top of a mountain. When the transfiguration happened, where were they? On top of a mountain. Always up high. We must always look up. We must always look forward. We must always be ready to see God in all of God's majesty. The one thing that I learned more than anything else from this, from this hike was just how much I complain. I think you heard a few complaints from me today, didn't you? Well, I complained the whole way up, but I didn't complain on the way down. Because I had seen and I had been refocused. To what God wanted me to see. It was well worth the entire trip. It was well worth the pain. It was well worth the opportunity. The sweat. And everything. And friends. These are opportunities for us to see. That God is still at work. God created the world. God created the lands. As we read in Psalms. As well as we read in Genesis. And what I love about Psalm 24 as it pertains today is it says, Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Well, Jesus did. 
Jesus was holy enough. Jesus had a pure heart and clean hands. Jesus did not lift up falsities. And Jesus did not swear deceitfully. And not only did he go from the top of the hill or the top of the mountain, he went up into heaven. He ascended to the Lord. He ascended to the kingdom. Friends, there are many times in this world where we are often, um, where we are often, dis, you know, filled with deceit. We are distracted from what is important. We are confused with everything going on around us, and we don't look up. And if you're not, if you're not looking up, how can you be walking up? I don't know about you, but if I would have been walking like this right here up that mountain yesterday. I would have probably made a fall. And that would have hurt. We all stumble. We all trip and fall. But we have to get back up again and remember that we have to look forward. We have to look ahead of us. We have to look up at God. So no matter what's going on around us, we have to be ready to look up. Before we look back, before we look down, we must look up. Because the moment you look down is the moment you get scared. The moment you look down is the moment that things get problematic. Remember, I told you that I'm afraid of heights. When I was going up this fire tower, up the endless, it seemed, flights of stairs, I kept making the mistake of looking down. And anyone, that'll, anyone that's afraid of heights will tell you, don't look down. If only we would look up, we would be better off. I want you to take that from today. Jesus ascended. Jesus went up. We should look up. Look towards the top of the mountain. Look towards the top of the hill where our help comes from. From the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Only when we look up. Can we truly see the beauty? Because when we look up, we see God and all that is around us and all that we do and all of the world.
Hear now this benediction, friends. Look up. Look up into the hills. Remember where your help comes from. Look up towards the top of the mountain. Look up to the temple. Remember Jesus ascended up where God is. May we look up. May we look forward. May we always set our eyes upon God. For we will truly never be deceived if we do so. Go in peace this day. Serve the Lord always, friends. And thanks and glory be to God. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.